Coach, you made a video years ago about the air bike for cardio for MMA. Can we get an updated video, question mark, or tell me how to use it? That's from Goosh Use It. I might do a video one day on it. Listen, I really like the air bike. There's so many benefits, okay? Because when you test human beings on how what's the what's the most calories calories per second spent? Sprinting is up there, like running, sprinting, and air bike is up there. Like it's among the top one percent exercises you can do. Also, so is kickboxing, by the way. That's why I always say the bag, the bag, you know, the heavy bag is one is the best cardio machine. It is the best cardio machine. Why? Because the thing is like doing bag work teaches you how to throw a punch. If you're running and doing air bike, it's good. It gets you in shape, but you're not really learning a skill, you know? So if I can do my cardio and learn a skill, imagine two guys. Person A, he's doing bag every day. He's doing his bag work every day in calisthenics. Person B, He's doing road work. He's doing a whole bunch of sprints, etc. Both are going to be lean. Both are going to be super healthy. Both are going to be in tip-top shape. However, f person A, he can also throw a punch. He can kick. He can knee. He can defend himself. Street altercation happens. Boom, boom, boom. This guy's throwing punches. He's defending himself. That's why I think it's better because also it's funner because I'm practicing a skill. So I'm keeping my mind occupied. Whereas when I'm on the air bike or running, then I'm really relying on keeping my mind occupied by listening to a podcast or like, you know, watching a movie or something. But let's say some people, you know, you put on a movie and you're on your air bike, maybe some people like to do that. You can find ways to entertain yourself. However, you can also do that with the bag. So if I put on a podcast, I go hit the bag for an hour. Like for me, hitting the bag for an hour is nothing. It's like, it's like a really easy bag workout. I like to do sometimes two hours. You know, I really like hitting the bag. Now you're developing a lot of skill. Whereas on the air bike, the air bike is amazing. However, you're just moving one leg in front of the other. It's not really that complicated. With that said, air bike is fantastic because you can do crazy sprinting. You can increase testosterone. You can develop a very muscular body. You can increase your cardiovascular capacity with very, well, I would say zero impact. Zero, almost, almost zero impact. Okay, so there's no bad way to do an air bike workout. I think they're all good. Now, one air bike workout I'll give you that's really easy is you do 40 seconds medium capacity and then 20 seconds really really hard okay do that for 15 rounds so that'll take you 15 minutes so 20 seconds excuse me 40 seconds mellow 20 seconds all out you do that 15 times trust me you're gonna have an incredible workout you're gonna lose four or five pounds on that workout <laughs> coach what do you suggest to someone who's coming off the couch and wants to get back into it that's some Muhammad Nakhil. Um, that's a good one. You know, start by getting a little bit of good shape. You know, get in good shape. Don't just like jump into combat sports. So I would tell you, do strong and stable running. Go to jujiclub.com. Do get strong and stable knees. Do some of those exercises. Get back into shape. Basic shape. Don't wait too long. And drill. Okay, let's say you're going to do jujitsu or boxing. Just drill. Don't spar. Don't go live yet. If you haven't, you know, been in shape. Do the part where they do the arm bars, the triangle chokes, the sweeps. Just do the technique. And then, okay, guys, thank you very much. I'm going to just go hit the weights. If your gym doesn't have weights, do your weight routine at home. Uh, do a kettlebell routine. Uh, body weight exercise is also good. Just get in shape and do technique. Once you feel you have the confidence to roll, start rolling. But I would suggest that just jumping in rolling after you haven't been uh, active, you can get your, you know, you can get hurt. You can get a little bit roughed up. In what ways was GSP a freak athlete? That's from William Travis. Well, I'll tell you something. He had an incredible reach and he had incredible explosiveness. Like his vertical jump was quite stunning. He had an incredible vertical, very explosive. So when he would shoot a double leg, it was actually quite difficult to see coming. So I know I sparred with him for many years. His double leg was incredibly difficult to stop. If you didn't get to an underhook, you weren't stopping his double leg. So like if he shot in your legs and you tried to sprawl, it, it, it didn't matter. Sprawls rarely worked on him. Rarely. You had to get into an underhook. If you didn't get into an underhook, I've seen some guys stopping with Uchimata. Like good, really good judo guys who like turn with the double leg and kind of Uchimata him off their body. So that would be another possibility. Even then, that was tough to do. Uh, it had to be the underhook. Without the underhook, stopping GSP's double leg was like just really difficult. Incredibly difficult. Is power clean or snatch a better exercise for MMA? That's from Jack Murphy. Both are good, okay? But if I had to pick one, I would pick the snatch. Um, it's the most powerful move in sports. The most wattage you can 
you can induce in a human body is the snatch, believe it or not. So it's the most powerful movement in sports. Uh, but the clean and jerk also has its attributes. It also has great attributes. So I would really rec recommend doing both. There's no need to do one over the other. They both have a plus and a minus. They both have something good and bad, like uh, pros and cons. Do them both. There's no need to choose one over the other. Coach, I lost 10 pounds in two weeks doing keto, <laughs> but I've lost muscle. How do I gain it back? Just add carbs plus protein, less fat, question mark. That's from True, True Red Crime. Guys, I'm not a big keto guy, okay? Now look, you you lost, you said 12, 10 pounds in two weeks. You really lost a lot of water, okay? I'm not saying keto is bad. I know a lot of you guys out there do keto. If you're doing combat sports, I don't recommend keto. I don't think so. I don't think it's a good idea because you need the glycogen. You're dumping a lot of water. Look, I'm, I feel like I lost a lot of weight, but I'm looking faded. It's just your muscles are... You emptied the water out of your muscles. Don't forget, glycogen, carbs are, carbs, glycogen is stored one part glycogen, three parts water. So when you cut the carbs, you lose a lot of water. You look more lean, but your muscles are less full. It's like if you take creatine, right? Creatine will balloon up your muscles. It stores more water into your muscles. So I don't recommend you uh, cut your calories. I don't want to go into a whole discourse on diet, but try high carb, low fat, high protein. High carb, low fat, low cal meals. Try to try to Google that. Like highly satiating foods, high protein, low cal, but with carbs. Like don't cut out the carbs if you're playing sports. You know, if you if you're an athlete, don't cut out the carbs. Now, if you're not an athlete, if you're not doing a glycogenic combat sport, you don't need so much carbs. So I would tell you, look, eat carbs for breakfast, then skip them for lunch, skip them for dinner. If you're not a, if you're not an athlete, and if that doesn't feel right, your stomach's not feeling right, have carbs for breakfast, carbs for lunch, and skip them for dinner. So you'd have two meals of carbs and then see how much carbs you want in your life, you know, but you can slowly restrict your carbs and increase more protein. And if you want to go that route, but I wouldn't go that route. If you're a combat athlete, do not go that route. If you're a combat athlete. Hey coach, what do you think makes a good chin? That's from Musa. I think neck strength. I think having a good strong neck. Okay. Um, make sure to do the strong and stable neck routine, I highly recommend like headstands. I like to do headstands. I get upside down. I put my whole body on my head. I stand on my head. I do a few other exercises, but I love the headstand. One, it's super convenient to do. And two, it builds a very, very, very strong neck. And when I'm passing guard, oftentimes I find myself standing on my head. Why? Because it's just like, it's such a great position for me to be in to clear hooks, clear legs. And because I spend so much time standing on my head that I feel I can do it comf comfortably. So it's not only a great way to strengthen your neck, it's also a great passing tool it's also good for when you're fighting when i shoot double legs sometimes i spear with my neck i spear with my head you know i use my head to push into the guy's body you have to have a strong neck and i think if you get hit in the head the stronger your neck is the neck the less your neck's gonna wobble the less your head's gonna wobble the less your head's gonna wobble the less your head's gonna whip back and forth the less you're gonna shake your brain do you think it's okay to kick with your shin bone question mark that's from the all for one Absolutely. Kicking with the shin bone is super important, but don't kick with the lower part of your shin bone. Don't kick with the the, the sh part of your shin bone that's really small near your ankle. It's this part of the bone, okay? You want to kick with this, see? That part of your shin is very thick. Watch any f any time a guy's leg breaks, he never kicks with the lower part. It's always the upper part. Now, truth be told, a lot of top kickers kick with the bottom half. Now, if you kick with the bottom half, you got to be sure you're not kicking full power. So a lot of times, me, I'll kick the calf or I'll kick the back of the knee or I'll kick the thigh with the lower part of my foot. When I kick with the lower part of my foot, I never go full blast. I always assume that I'm getting a hit, I'm gonna hit bone. That way I always kind of like tap the leg. Now as I'm fighting, as I'm sparring, I'll feel like I can kick a little more. There's always a risk, right? I'll kick a little deeper, I'll kick, I'm hitting the muscle. Okay, he's not able to stop this kick. He's not seeing it, he's not in position to stop it. I'll put in a little more pressure. But I personally, I don't believe and kicking full power. Like me, when I kick the body, I'm always scared to hit the elbow. When I kick the body, and I like to kick the body, I don't kick full power. I kick like, I throw my kick and pull it back. I throw my kick and pull it back. So I don't drive through like a tight pad, like, oh, I'm just like trying to saw the bag in half. No, 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 I don't do that. I retract the leg. I throw the kick and retract. So I barely touch the guy. And I'm finding my range. Am I gonna follow through on the next one? If his arms are coming down, I won't. I'll go to the head. If his arms are staying up and I'm touching ribs, the next one I might go a little more. You start learning to be very careful with how much power you put in your kicks, okay? Now, there's a time and place where you see an opening 
and you bust saw through the body. Yes, of course. I'm not saying that doesn't happen. Of course, absolutely. You go for a kill. It's just that sometimes you're not sure if the elbow is going to be there. If you're going to snag a bone, you kick, you test the waters. You you send a decoy kick. You know, you go for, you get some reconnaissance. You throw a kick, and you're like, oh, okay, well that fit that went in nicely. Next one, I'm going to lean in nice, stronger. Now this comes with experience, guys. But I would tell you. A lot of my kicks, they're just like little touches, little touches. And then once in a while, I feel there's an opening. I see an opening. I bust saw through the body. 